Okay, so 2020 tax season uh, begins a little later this year, but if you are a South African who earns most of your money abroad, you may need to start considering a number of changes in the tax regime slightly earlier than the rest of us. As it currently stands, according to our Income Tax Act, um, a South African resident who is an employee and renders services outside the country on behalf of an employer for longer than 183 full days in any 12-month period can be granted an exemption on their tax. Now, it looks as though new rules will give you a break on that first million rand, but we're going to be seeing uh, that that exemption might be falling away. And Nicholas Boerter is a senior financial immigration specialist at Tax Consulting SA and joins me to help us understand this this morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Rifilwe, Nicholas. Hi, thanks very much for having me on the show. Of course, please won't you help us understand um, how the, the exemptions and how things will affect whom in this, tra- in this change? Yeah, so basically South African expats uh, were able to claim Section 10102 exemption. Um, that's the 183 60-day rule. Um, in the past, that, that allowed you to fully exempt your income. Um, what's happened now is that, that, that that's been amended to only allow for exemption of the first million rand. Um, the, the, the surplus of the million rand that expats are earning is then going to be taxable according to South Africa's normal tax brackets, um, which obviously places a lot of expats in uh, a peculiar predicament. Do you have a sense of the proportion of uh, expats that might fall into that bracket uh, from a from a numbers perspective? Yeah, so I mean, we're dealing with quite a few clients at the moment, um, numbers in between the hundreds and thousands. Um, majority of them are sitting in that surplus, obviously, with, with less favorable exchange rates. Um, and also what's taken into account is also your um, benefits. Um, so anything such as travel allowance, housing allowance, um, schooling allowance, any security protections, especially for those working in Middle Africa, um, that's all coming into play, uh, taking into play when it when it considers your your million rand. Um, so obviously they're quickly surpassing that. Sure, I can only imagine, particularly because most people will also be earning in hard currency. Uh, obviously, when they when they're doing so abroad, out of interest, I mean, do you have a sense of why the this exemption or this exemption has been taken away? Is it just our desperation to find sources of revenue? Um, so from Treasury themselves, uh, what they did is they cross-referenced um, South African experts, so obviously immigration stats, um, and compared it to the compliance within tax returns. So those who have formally immigrated, um, as well as actually checking if people are uh, claiming Section 10 one or 2 correctly in the tax returns. Um, what they noticed was that there was a vast difference um, between, between the two, so obviously immigration stats um, and people being compliant. Um, so it was almost a bit of a scare tactic into wake up South Africans um, to to correct their terms and get compliance, um, but obviously, as we all know, that um, we are under budget, so and experts are earning a lot, so they 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 perhaps want a piece of that pie sure. as well. It's a combination. I mean, there's there's not a lot of pressure points left um, amongst uh, taxpayers, I suppose. Um, but exactly. but to your point, Nicholas, I mean, if the compliance was not really strong, then it's important that they get that right as well. Exactly, exactly. So, so I mean, uh, with, with the cases we're dealing with, we've noticed that that, that non-compliance um, statement is, is most definitely correct. Okay. Um, and so making sure that they have a person like yourselves, I suppose, on board is going to be the easiest way for us to manage this for the first year, yes? Um, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, what we do is we just make sure that everyone is up to date and compliant. Um, and then, obviously, if if they are correct in not declaring their foreign income, um, we assist clients with, with formalizing that, showing that they're, in fact, non-tax residents and there's no claim um, on, on their foreign income. Um, but, obviously, it's dependent on each person's situation. Because, in the main, I would say, in other countries, if, the, if it's the under 183 days, they're not going to be facing a double taxation, right? It's not as if that country is, is going to be causing, uh, is going to be taxing them very heavily. Is that right? Um, it, it obviously depends on the country. So, the each region, country yeah. has their own tax rates. Um, so, some countries are higher, some countries are lower. Um, and then, obviously, you look towards the double taxation agreement yes. to see um, where you can t- claim tax credits so that you, you're not being double hit. Okay, good. As long as that, that option is, is, remains available. Nicholas Boerter, yes. thank you so much for helping us clarify that. He's the Senior Financial Immigration Specialist at Tax Consulting South Africa.